Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy that we had uh, soup and salad for lunch, so you actually look relatively awake instead of a meaty stew or something like that we could all imagine. Anyway, I'm happy to be here and happy. For, thank you for the invitation. Uh, the first half of the previous presentation, I would say more or less, uh, uh, represents also the situation in Finland. There might be some minor details. Regarding the latter part of the previous presentation, I can't really say because uh, such studies have not yet been conducted here. So I'll be giving you a little bit of background on the Finnish case in general because I presume that most of you have a, a restricted knowledge about it. And then we'll move on to the... Uh, <coughs> refugee and asylum issues, and I'll talk in brief about some research that we have done, and then I'll make some quite basic suggestions for how to proceed. Now, in order to understand the uh, migration situation in Finland, we have to remember that within the European context, and why also not more broadly, Finland is a rather recent uh, immigration society in the sense that only after the end of the Cold War, the uh, uh, immigration started to grow in here. But it has grown ever since. So in a way, uh, we share somewhat similar recent history uh, in comparison to countries like Ireland, Spain, Italy, Portugal, and so on which also received a fair amount of, of uh, uh, incoming migrants uh, after, uh, since about the beginning of the 1990s. Now, again, it matters where you are. You know, a simple truth of life that we are not randomly located on this planet, but we happen to be in a particular place. And as often is the case, the majority of migrants do come from close by. That's also the case here, especially from the territories of the former Soviet Union, Russia and Estonia in particular, but elsewhere also from, uh, from Western Europe. Until today, the main uh, reasons of entry to this country have been family-related, international uh, marriage being one significant feature, uh, ethnic returnees from close-by regions, uh, refugees, uh, labor migrants and students. Now, that's about incoming issues. The outgoing issues is a different story. There are great differences between uh, uh, different nationalities regarding their uh, tendency to move out from Finland. Quite simply said, it goes so that uh, if the living conditions in your country of origin are poorer to much poorer than in Finland, your probability to stay here for longer is much higher and vice versa. <clears throat> if we think about Finnish, uh, um, both migration and migrant integration policy in broad strokes, we can say that Finland until today has not yet developed a single holistic type of vision of what is, is, it, is its part in terms of global mobilities. We do have had and have had already for some time pretty specific policies in certain areas. For example, regarding certain type of labor mobility, regarding refugee and asylum, and uh, regarding student mobility. But for the rest, it works, I would say, um, somewhat more uh, retrospectively. So you look at what happened and then you think that you know what to work with that. In terms of migrant integration policy, it works in a different way. And that is uh, that it, there's been somewhat systematic migrant integration policy, especially starting from local level, maybe from the mid-1990s onwards, uh, and uh, then uh, being more systematized in the 2000s. Initially, it was aimed only at uh, uh, refugee and certain type of uh, ethnic return migration. But since the 2010, we could say that uh, uh, it's been applied more broadly among the whole of the migrant population. And a key feature here, as well as elsewhere, is uh, the high level of uh, politicization on migrant-related issues during the past five plus years. 
with the rise of the Finns or the true Finns party in particular, both in municipal power as well as in national power today in government has meant that uh, migration, is, especially refugee policies, have been under much debate, which heated up very much last uh, autumn. And a colleague of mine, a political scientist who on a regular basis follows international media says that there's one thing that distinguishes Finnish media, uh, especially on asylum related questions, and it is that unlike in other countries, we haven't stopped talking about it. So you cannot open a major daily Finnish newspaper without several times of week having front page new news on whatever that has to do with the current asylum situation. Now, here again, if we think about the little change over the past 25 years, here we have people by their country of, uh, kind of like by their continent of birth, the blue one being uh, Europe, uh, uh, the reddish one mainly referring to former Soviet territories. Uh, we do see that uh, their share has remained about the same, but otherwise we see increasing migration, both from, uh, especially from Asia. Now, uh, this data, very recent from, uh, 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 from last week, is telling about then about in particular of uh, asylum seekers, which ha what have been the major asylum seekers uh, in Finland over the past three years. So first, if we look at the numbers in 2014, 3,651. Uh, 3, 2015, 32,476, and this year up to last week, 4,481, okay? Uh, it simply says that there were many more last year, but otherwise the picture remains fairly, fairly similar. Uh, uh, Iraq, Somalia, Afghanistan, more or less among the, the top three, four countries. Uh, all the time. Syria has been uh, uh, growing up. Um, and I'll return to this in a minute. Here you see the situation uh, uh, in Finland week by week uh, uh, of last year. So you see the pretty quick rise uh, from late summer to uh, uh, early uh, uh, to, to December. Now, <clears throat> As in Sweden, so we also do uh, have a small number of UNHCR uh, uh, quota refugees or resettled refugees uh, that have been uh, uh, taken to Finland. And, you know, they kind of like follow their own path in many respects when they enter, the, enter their new life in here. These are the quotas, uh, 750 plus during uh, the last 15 years. Uh, being the quotas was uh, uh, put a little bit higher for the past uh, two years because of the Syrian crisis. Uh, but I'd like to note that these quotas have not been filled every year, so the actual numbers are somewhat lower. And then talking about the asylum seekers, to which I just showed some figures before. So uh, it's been uh, in the range from 1,000 to 4,000 individuals during the past 25 years, with the exception of, of last year. More or less, there, uh, there have been some small deviances uh, from this one. And of last year, about, three, uh, about two out of three individuals uh, came from Iraq. Uh, the other major groups were then Afghanistan, Somalia, and Syria. And prior to last, uh, before last, last autumn, so uh, somewhat under 50,000 individuals altogether uh, either as uh, quota refugees or uh, asylum uh, grantees have, uh, have come to Finland. Now, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, the majority of these individuals, families, whatever they are, are uh, concentrated in the Helsinki capital region. Now, if you take the metro some 15 kilometers east from here, uh, Eastern Helsinki is, is one of the major uh, relocation uh, uh, areas because of uh, availability of housing, basically, of uh, affordable uh, housing and city-sponsored social housing in those areas. 
Now, uh, unemployment has been on a much higher level than among uh, uh, other migrant groups, and we are talking about really high levels, so that we are talking about uh, more than 50% of the so-called active workforce being unemployed. Uh, but we have to remember that uh, uh, due to the reasons that were also identified in the previous talk, um, these people are in a, a less advantaged position in many respects, uh, but their situation does get better over time, and it does, does get significantly better over time, but still it does not come close, uh, um, well, not too close anyway, of the majority population situation. So there are many issues that, uh, are, and, and still also some open questions. I think uh, issues of human capital are quite central uh, in this respect, because we have to remember that uh, if you enter a new society as a migrant, let's say, you know, a generic migrant, not of a particular type, uh, you tend to begin your uh, working life career in uh, rather basic jobs that don't, where you don't uh, need that much uh, uh, either linguistic skills or, or previously acquired uh, work skills. And this particular segment of Finnish labor market, where you don't need much skills and other ones, uh, has been significantly reduced in the number of workplaces in that over the past about uh, 20, 25 years again. So there is a bottleneck in the Finnish labor market in how to enter it, and this may then have uh, long-term consequences for the individuals and in questions who would benefit uh, from this. Now, and let's take another uh, twist and return to this sort of politicization of immigration. So from about, the, uh, uh, from about 10 years uh, back, we saw an increasing uh, uh, social mobilization around, uh, among uh, people who uh, were, uh, were opposing, uh, uh, especially refugee policy, uh, and, uh, uh, in Finland and refugee, other refugee-related issues, broadly speaking, refugees here, uh, that then became manifested as a, as a political movement then around the year 2010. And what is particular about this, first a social online movement, now a, a, a true political force in Finnish society, is that it's especially not only refugees, but Somali refugees, who are the largest so-called visible minority in this country, uh, and the, uh, the Islamic religion that are the sort of main targets of, uh, of this community. Uh, uh, that means, uh, and why I'm taking this up, that there is uh, uh, increasing, how would I say, acceptance of uh, showing off your prejudices, even if not always in public, then uh, uh, you know, it being somehow acceptable in certain uh, segments of Finnish uh, society that we may presume are by no means beneficials for the individuals in question. Okay, <clears throat> now we have been, uh, uh, by we I mean Finland in generic terms again, seeing myself also some extent as part of that, as a voter and as a citizen, so, uh, um, but in de facto referring to certain policies that have been uh, uh, implemented uh, during the course of this year. So we are creating problems to ourselves, problems which would not have existed in this way had the world taken a different path, but which uh, uh, probably will uh, 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 need some reconsideration at some stage. So, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, refugee uh, residence permit applications, uh, one key document that the Finnish Immigration Service has has to do about their analysis of the countries of origin. And it was in this context that some of the, the, the main uh, origin countries of, of, of asylum seekers coming to Finland were declared safer, not safe, but safer in comparison to the uh, 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 previous uh, analysis. And this uh, uh, has to do with Iraq, for instance. And we have also seen the, uh, um, 
the results of these uh, policy changes in so that, that whereas before, sorry, I can't recall now the exact figures, but it's in this direction, that if previously, let's just say, one third of the applications to about, to, or about well, half of the, of the applications received a positive uh, uh, re reply from the viewpoint of the, of the applicant, now we are somewhere down to 10 to 20%. So there's been a true and very remarkable reduction in the number of, uh, of, of ac uh, approved applications. Now, this is of course an administrative thing to do this, there's no uh, doubt about that. Uh, but this takes simultaneously place with the factual situation that there are rather restricted possibilities of return. So it's quite likely, uh, and everybody seems to be uh, more or less of the same opinion on this, who know about these things, that this will lead to a, a relatively quick uh, a rise of the number of undocumented migrants in Finland. That means basically those who were seeking uh, asylum but were not granted it, but don't really have another uh, anywhere to go. Okay. So, uh, leaving these people in a vulnerable position. This is a, a thing that is in process now. There's a bit of a speculation, but we don't know the outcome yet. Then, uh, uh, other restrictions in what I call here now, sort of generically refugee law, not to make it too difficult for you. So, there have been uh, restrictions on family reunification regarding the, the, the sort of uh, uh, amount of money that you need to have or salary that you need to have so that you can support your family. Uh, and these uh, are considered by people uh, in this field, and I think also if we look at the current employment and income figures of refugee population, it seems pretty evident that we will have an increasing number of, of those who have been uh, granted the right to stay here in Finland, uh, but who uh, uh, will not in practice have any chance for family reunification. Okay. So we may question that what this will bring about, and the answer is pretty obvious. It will bring about all kinds of, uh, well, uh, uh, personal, uh, bad feelings, uh, sorrow, maybe at some stages even uh, tra tragic family uh, outcomes. But in, uh, in other words, it will bring about uh, mental stress for this individual who are already more pressed from before may lead to uh, 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 people having uh, different kinds of social problems more and, and, and so on. Okay. And I would just like to why I took this up because this is uh, concrete policy changes that have been done very recently and at least to me this seem to be the sort of pretty straightforward outcomes that at some level will, will come out of this now. Currently, we do have a, a we've, we've finished one uh, uh, one project on unaccompanied refugee minors uh, at our institute, where we basically uh, figured out that the reception system generally works quite well, uh, but uh, there are serious problems in uh, in uh, public authorities uh, communication with each other. Okay. Now again, the situation will change because the numbers grew uh, quite significantly last year. So this was before the crisis. Another study that is ongoing, so we don't have the uh, results yet, but I want to bring it up because it will bring out uh, some quite uh, unique data. Uh, it's a comparative study between Finland, Sweden, Norway and Denmark, where we look at the uh, integration outcome of individuals who uh, uh, about 10 years after their arrival. That will be based on uh, Nordic register data, you know, similar to the study that was referred to earlier. And uh, when the results come out, I believe that by next year, uh, at the, from maybe about a year from now, we already do have some preliminary results that will uh, strengthen our understanding of that. And then we do have currently an, uh, a study that looks at the, the factual resettlement of uh, asylum grantees from the, uh, from the uh, reception centers to Finnish municipalities. That has been a very big debate, uh, especially among uh, professionals here in Finland, but uh, uh, we'll see how that will turn out. Okay, that was just some little bit of marketing. Now, <clears throat> what is the way forward? Well, 
If we look in terms of integration, as was part of the title of this panel, it's quite obvious that we would uh, need to provide opportunities for education, be the language uh, education or recognition of previous studies, both issues that were uh, also mentioned by the uh, previous speakers. This boils down to a very large extent to the human capital issue already mentioned. Second one, considering easing uh, uh, legal entry to work life. This is actually something that's also, there's been a little bit of uh, debate about that. But uh, personally, I see this as a rather crucial uh, uh, element that uh, it's uh, generally uh, not on good for uh, most people to don't have a, a, a some income at least, it's uh, good for your self-worth, especially in a society like Finland where people's social position is often uh, uh, defined through their work-life uh, position. And then to some extent uh, accept and support cultural and so on traditions that are, are suit around here. Now, the big thing is, and this is where, where policymakers sometimes uh, may be a little bit too hasty, that a lot of this takes a lot of time. Okay, so you simply have to trust that the uh, choices you make lead to the desired outcome sooner, but generally later. And what we have to remember here is uh, that the more we focus on the so-called first generation, be the refugees or whoever, the better their children will do. It's about social inheritance of your uh, uh, position in society. Okay. Regarding inequality, um, not to forget the great uh, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where you know when you have shelter and food and so on, you still have to keep your self-worth, you know, to be to be proud of yourself. And I think this is a key point in uh, discrimination, especially in uh, uh, social movements that aim to in the extreme cases, dehumanize others, but in the less extreme cases, great place great suspicion on, on certain groups, be they cultural or re religious or whatever familial traditions. So that is something we always have to remember. People will need to have, well, I could say almost a right to feel good about themselves and about their vision of a good life various measures to combat both direct and indirect discrimination, which are not always that easy to identify, and then understand that uh, discrimination processes of inequality change also over time. How it was a decade or two ago might be different today. And taking a pragmatist view that inequalities will always persist in one form or another, but the key thing, what we can do and where we can be effective is to minimize that. Okay, thank you. <laughs>